it's 2025 and people still think large language models can't count the number of R's and they're kind of correct. Um, in the larger models, we all know, yes, they can count letters now. And we all know that we can write a very simple function to count letters in a word and potentially do some function calling from a from a LLM. But I've got a different approach. I believe that DeepSeq R1, uh, one of the smaller large language models, so one of the smaller LLMs that run locally, they're the 8 billion parameter model. So that's this one here, 8B. I believe this particular model can actually run um, and, and, and count how many R's in strawberry. The, the caveat there is I don't think it will get it right every single time. And I've got a new unfounded theory, a, a potentially terrible approach to this problem. But what if... What if we just prompted with a brand new session each time, so not holding on to any of that history, what if we prompted the exact same question 10 times? 10 times, then we just extracted the answer, we got the number from each, and then we just counted. And we said to ourselves, well, actually, you know what? This is a non-deterministic machine. It's not guaranteed to give you the exact same response every single time, but if it's kind of gone through the thinking process 10 times and seven out of 10, it's given the same answer. Could we count on that answer? I don't know if we can, but let's, let's give it a try. So first of all, here is the sort of question, how many R's are in strawberry? And we can actually test that. Let's not do deep seek straight away. Let's actually test that with Llama 3.1. And I've got the 8 billion parameter or 7 billion, no, 8 billion, 8 billion parameter model installed for Llama 3.1. So let's go ahead and run this on Llama 3.1. It's a little bit quicker. Uh, not that it matters because I'm going to fast forward. So let's pass in model to this little bit of Python here. And this Python is very straightforward. It's just saying from a Llama import chat, then we're um, creating a variable called response and we're saying chat and the model we want to use, well, it's this one here. And when I comment this one out, next time I run it, it would be the one above. And then the messages are uh, just the user and then how many R's in strawberry. That is the question. Shift enter on that and shift enter again. So this is going to be using Llama 3.1. Okay, Llama 3.1 actually nailed it, uh, got it correct the first time. Brand new session. Let's try that again. Okay, three, that's also correct. Up oh, two. So there we go. There's an example. Now it's, now it's saying two for whatever reason, right? So let's go ahead and run that again. So that's four. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to say four I in range. Okay, range 10. Uh, we're going to run this 10 times. And we're going to print the response all 10 times. And then we'll just print a little a little break in, in programming. We'll do a little like maybe a star dash star dash actually we'll just times that by 20 uh, and shift enter on that just so we know exactly where it's breaking apart so it's two then it's three then it's two then it's two then it's three then it's three then it's two oh god my theory is not working out three then two it is very random isn't it okay so how many times out of ten did i get it correct so one two three four see this wouldn't work this would not work it only got it right four times. I'm just going to do that really, like really <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Let's add really think about it just to the end, even knowing that this isn't a quote thinking model. Uh, what do we got? Three, then two, then two, oh, back to three, then two, mm, then two, then two, then two. Terrible approach. Um, but let's not let that bring us down. So we know we now know, we, we feel like Llama 3.1 isn't up for the task, cannot achieve it. Uh, why don't we do deep seek R1? So I'm going to comment out that one and I'm going to hit that run button. This is a MacBook, uh, MacBook Air M2, so it isn't really designed for large language models to be running and churning through like this. So I'm going to fast forward this part of the video, but then we, when I come back, we are going to, yeah, we're going to count through those. Alrighty, so that's DeepSeek has finished running and let's get a view of how often it's getting it correct. So where are we? So first one is a three, which is correct, looking good. Where are we? Okay, scrolling down, a lot of thinking. Okay, goodness me, that is a lot. You know what I'm going to do to fast forward this a little bit for us? I'm going to take this little funky guy here, copy that one. I'm going to paste that in there and I'm going to make sure I can search cell outputs. So first one is a three, 
Second one is a, is a three. Third one's a three. Fourth one's a three. 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 There are three. <laughs> oh, four. Okay. So one is wrong so far. Four. Back to three. 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 <laughs> Okay, so overall, I think just just one, yeah, four. So when I run this through DeepSeek R1, I've taken 10, a sample size of 10 and nine of them were three and one of them was four. How realistic is this? How can we rely on it? Uh, more testing required, but to get back to the original commenters, uh, sort of, yeah, the original comment, they're not wrong. If you were to run it once and got that four answer or in the Llama case, get a bunch of twos, you would believe that is the, the, that's the answer it's going to give. But they are non-deterministic in the sense that they have probabilities of, of next sort of you know, term and it's constantly running over itself. So I think more testing is required, but there could be a little trick where we we use multiple questions to get that answer. I'm going to come back with another video. I think there's more to do on this. We're going to do more Python. We're going to do more data cleaning. We're going to, get, we're going to move past these um, toy examples into the real thing, I promise. Um, but it's all learning, right? It's all learning. I think passing off to a function is a really interesting concept. I want to do more of that, especially if there's other API calls that we could be making to help sort of bring together and clean data and all that sort of stuff. So if this is at all useful, make sure you hit that subscribe button um, and I'll catch you in the next video.